Let's talk about detecting your sample now. We're moving on to the dyes and some of the hardware. It's important, you know, there's a lot of different dyes spanning the visible and far red and infrared wavelengths. How do you choose which dyes to use? Well, first off, you want to match the dyes that you have. Uh, you want to match the dyes that you purchase to the filter sets and hardware settings that you have available. Um, fluorescein filter sets or light cubes are very common in instruments, so it's, you'll probably have a green dye in there, like Alexa Fluor 488 or fluorescein or FITSI. That's very common. But your scope might also be uh, configured such that it has a filter set for DAPI in the blue for nuclear labeling, maybe Texas red in the red or a Psi 3 in the red-orange color, or a far red dye like uh, Psi 5 or Alexa Fluor 647. Our light cubes, uh, we, we here at uh, Thermo Fisher Scientific sell EVOS light cubes for use with our EVOS microscopes, which I'll mention again later. And here you can see an example of those uh, light cubes in the lower right or traditional filter sets in the upper right and the sort of band passes that you see in this graph. I realize that you can sometimes have a problem with bleed through. This is where, let's say you have a green fluorescent dye, like uh, Alexa Fluor 488, and an orange red fluorescent dye, like Alexa Fluor 555, or Psi 3. This might be where one dye bleeds through into the filter of the other dye, such that you see a signal. What can you do? Well, up here in the upper right, you see an example of some cells imaged in the green with Alexa Fluor 488. All you should be seeing are punctate spots, which are the peroxisomes that you're labeling. But here you can see some bleed through from the Alexa Fluor 555 phylloidin. Those uh, F-actin filaments, they are not supposed to be there. They're actually bleeding through from the red into the green. So what do you do about this? Well, first off, you can reduce the dye concentration of the offending dye. For instance, in this image, I would want to reduce the concentration or dilution that I use of the Alexa Fluor 555, such that it's not as bright and thus doesn't bleed through as much. Another choice is to use a different dye combination. So instead of Alexa Fluor 555, I would choose a dye that's farther away from the green. For instance, Alexa Fluor 594, which is in the Texas red wavelength, or even a far red dye like Psi 5. Or you can choose a different filter set that has a narrower bandwidth. Um, most people don't have a lot of filter sets to choose from, so that's not as reasonable of an option usually. Or you can use some specialized imaging software to subtract out one image from another or special instruments. But usually those first two recommendations are the best, reducing dye concentration or choosing dyes that are farther apart. We have a tool online called the SpectraViewer at thermofisher.com slash SpectraViewer. And there you can choose numerous dyes and see their excitation and emission wavelengths. You can even pair it up uh, using that tool to display what your excitation and emission wavelengths are on your instrument. And using this tool, you can choose dyes that best fit your filter sets and be able to see just how much bleed through there might be between them, how much they overlap, how much the dyes might bleed through into the filters that you have. It's a very useful tool, and I highly recommend that you go there to check it out. Remember, careful dye choice means that you have clearly separated labels and specific labels. <laughs>